you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me one quick favor, see that little black subscribe button on the bottom of your screen, go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button really does help this channel grow my audience grow. And I appreciate it more than, you know, also quick, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook of the Betfred Sportsbook app, bet $50 on any game. Get up to $1,111 in free bets, courtesy of the Betfred Sportsbook. Thank you again. Now, here's the video that you came here for. So let's keep the party going. Um, and I'll be blunt. It is not often that I feel the need to really break down a, a team that was 1-11 the year before. But I will make an exception when they are the most intriguing, interesting, talked about team of the college football offseason, and that is the Colorado Buffaloes led by none other than Coach Prime, Deion Sanders. Listen, by now everybody knows the story, right? Like, oh, they had a million guys transfer out. And it's like, yeah, but does anybody besides me remember how bad they were last year? It wasn't just that they were 1-11. I'm just going to read you some stats here to set the framework for why Deion Sanders had to rip this team and this foundation down to the studs and then build it back up. Last year. Here were just some of the losses by Colorado. They lost by 42 to Minnesota, 23 to Arizona. They lost by 33 to Oregon State, 39 to Oregon, 33 to USC, 47 point loss to Washington, 42 point loss to Utah. So I'm not great at math, but that is seven games that they lost by at least 21 points, at least three touchdowns out of the 11 It shows you how bad this was. Oh, by the way, they finished 126th nationally in scoring, 130th in points allowed. So they had a bottom five scoring offense and a bottom five defense in terms of points given up. That gives you the framework of how bad this thing was and why Coach Prime had to do so much work to build this thing back up. So now that we have that as the framework, Let's talk a little bit about who he has, who he has brought in and what it means for the season ahead. Obviously, a quarterback, it all starts with his son, Shador Sanders. Shador is really talented. I mean, you put aside whatever you think about Coach Prime, too many portal kids, whatever. Shador Sanders would start for virtually every program in the country. There's a few, maybe USC is one of them. Like, there's a handful. But this was a kid that had an Alabama offer coming out of high school. He could have played pretty much anywhere in college football. He goes to play for his pops at Jackson State. And last year, he was phenomenal. I know it's a level down. I know stepping up from Jackson State to Colorado is a step up. But this was a guy that threw for 40 touchdowns with just six interceptions a season ago, 3,700 yards passing, 70% completion percentage. I don't care if it's Pop Warner, high school, FCS, Division II, college, NFL. 40 touchdowns, six interceptions on 70% completion percentage is pretty good. And the good thing is he will have plenty of talent around him at Colorado. By now, you probably know most of the names, but first of all, from the high school recruiting ranks, Dylan Edwards, former four-star running back, had been committed to Notre Dame, flipped to Colorado, Coach Prime. Uh, Amarion Miller had been committed to Nebraska, flips to Colorado and Coach Prime. Adam Hopkins, a four-star receiver out of Georgia, ends up with Colorado. And in the portal, they did good work as well. Uh, Xavier Weaver was the leading receiver at South Florida. 53 catches, six touchdowns there. He is now at Colorado. And then the guy, if you have heard Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, in any interviews, he has raved about Jimmy Horn, who had 37 catches at Southern Flo- at South Florida last year all AAC team member. So that's the positives. You have a dynamic quarterback and a bunch of skill position guys. Um, But the concerns are multifold. One, the offensive line is going to be patchwork. Obviously that is the toughest place to get big bodies, get quality bodies. Um, I think the lines, it goes without saying, are the places that it's toughest to recruit and certainly toughest to rebuild uh, over the course of an off season. Good news is you did bring in some nice pieces. Savion Washington, a 6'8 uh, tackle from uh, uh, from Kent State, who previously obviously played with the now current offensive coordinator, Sean Lewis, um, and a couple other intriguing names along the offensive line. And then defensively, 
Uh, also, a kind of the same deal. Tough to find big bodies, tough to find good bodies. Colorado did about as well as you could ask. Name to know there, Jordan Dominic, nine and a half tackles for loss, seven and a half sacks at Arkansas a year ago. They also added Taj Alston from West Virginia, Derek McClendon from Florida State, Amari McNeil from Tennessee, Shane Cox, and all Ivy League guy at Dartmouth. So they at least added quality bodies. Now, again, bluntly, I understand how all this works. Is it enough to beat USC and Oregon and all these teams? I don't know, but at least the talent level has been upgraded. Same at the linebacker position where you added a bunch of pieces uh, from SEC, ACC schools, most notably there, Brendan Gant from Florida State was, started a couple games last year. Levante Bailey played at Clemson the last couple years. And then the secondary should be the strength of this defense. Travis Hunter, we all know about, probably going to be a first round, probably going to be a top 10 pick in the 2025 NFL draft. Cormani McLean, five-star, was committed to Miami, ends up at Colorado. Jaquez Robinson comes in from Alabama. Shiloh Sanders, Coach Prime's other football-playing son that followed him from Jackson State is a safety, so that secondary should be really good. Now, we talked about the team. Where, the, where I guess, the concern would come in for me, they just have a thankless schedule. By the way, I think I mentioned this, but if I didn't, forgive me. Colorado's over under in the Betfred sports book is three and a half. So if I did not mention that I, I apologize. The over under is three and a half plus half, plus one twenty five to bet the over minus minus one fifty to bet the under. And it's not just about coach prime. People don't like coach prime or whatever. They have a really tough schedule. Colorado is maybe the toughest schedule I've seen in college football this year. Although Utah we're going to talk about next is in the short conversation. Colorado opens. I think we all know by now at the defending national runners-up TCU. TCU coming off an appearance in the championship game. That game is obviously in Fort Worth, Coach Prime's home away from home in Dallas. Um, That's a really tough game. Week two, you have Nebraska at home. And then just before the end of September, not talking about the whole season, just before the end of September, you have to play at Oregon and USC at home. So you're playing the defending champs, Nebraska, at Oregon, USC, that's all before the end of September. And so beyond that, that's just the end of September. After that, here are some of the other games that are on Colorado's schedule that are noteworthy. Uh, you have at UCLA, middle middle of the season, Oregon State at home, at Utah to end the year. And even a team like Arizona, which we'll talk about momentarily, is a program on the rise. So when you factor in the schedule, and you factor in the lack of depth specifically on the offensive and defensive lines, it's it's going to be an uphill battle for Coach Prime. Now, I will say, I do like the over for a few reasons. One, I believe in Coach Prime. And everybody that criticizes this or whatever, as I've said on the Aaron Torres podcast many times since he took this job, Coach Prime, everything he's doing at Colorado, he did at Jackson State. You just didn't pay attention. I've said it a million times. He did a documentary with Barstool Sports his first year at Colorado. And in that documentary, he basically did the same thing. Basically um, cut, if you want, whatever you want to call it, cut, whatever. Threw a bunch of kids off the team that weren't willing to put in the work, rebuilt it. By year two, they were awesome, okay? I think the final two years, if I remember my stats correctly, 22 and three overall, 22 and two against FCS programs. Guy can coach. Bottom line, end of story. And the other thing is, I do think while the Pac-12 is really good, I think there's enough toss-up games where they can get to three wins. They have Colorado State early. That's the only real easy should be a win. Uh, That's the only one that should be a win in September. At Arizona State, Stanford at home. Those are the kind of games that you got to win. At Washington State, Arizona tough games you got to win it at least a few of those tossups but bottom line is in a lot of these games they're going to have the better quarterback they're going to have the more dynamic skill position guys i'm going to go over three and a half with colorado